A major security scare that uh, closed the United States Embassy has eased at least a little bit for Americans and other foreigners in Yemen. And joining us now from Sana'a in Yemen is Steve Erlinger of the New York Times. Uh, Steve, the U.S. Embassy, the British Embassy, I take it they reopened for business today. Is it business as usual there? Um, it's not quite. The American Embassy opened up pretty much for business as usual. The British Embassy had its staff working, but was um, very restricted in terms of public access, and other European embassies were either closed or um, kept the public out. So does this mean that, that security threat, that, that fear of a plot to try to blow up the embassy, uh, is, has that gone away or what? Well, it's very hard to tell. Um, frankly, what had happened was uh, there was a firefight with some Al-Qaeda guys um, north of the airport, about 25 miles north of the capital. Um, and this seems to have disrupted, in the American view, um, this plot. But the plot was always actually more aimed at the British embassy, to be honest. And the British decided to be a bit more cautious and sort of day to day they'll reevaluate but because the threat was aimed at them they decided basically to keep their embassy shut to the public today steve i read your latest dispatch in the new york times and you make the point that the president of yemen now seems to be more determined to make sure his son gets his job as opposed to fighting al-qaeda right now is is that too harsh uh not too terribly harsh. I mean, basically, the president who's been ruling Yemen in one form or another um, for 31 years is very eager to have his son, who's about 38, named Ahmed, succeed him. And there are people, other people in the country who would rather not have that happen, um, who don't want that kind of a traditional Arab semi-democratic monarchy to be established here um, and it's 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 uh, something of an obsession with the president it's not that it keeps him from fighting al-qaeda but it means it distracts him and sometimes people say blocks him from using necessary resources for the kind of development in the rest of the country um, that you know, might absorb some of the angry unemployed youth who make good recruits for Al-Qaeda. How? Give us an, a, a feeling that you get, you've now been there for a while, of uh, the average Yemeni attitude towards the United States. Are they sympathetic with the U.S. and the West or with Al-Qaeda? Um, I would say they're not particularly sympathetic to the United States, particularly in the sense that you, you, you know, it could look as if it's unfair, but it can look as if in the United States is somehow at war with a lot of Muslim countries, even at war with Islam. And, and that was a feeling that grew up under the Bush administration, and there's better feelings with Obama that hasn't quite gone away. Now, there is a lot of sympathy with some of the ideas of al-Qaeda, i.e., you know, that the West is, represents an alien culture and should be expelled from the Holy Land. One final question before I let you go, Steve. Uh, the $150 million the U.S. is now proposing to give to Yemen that sort of dwarfs in comparison to the $2 billion it receives from uh, Saudi Arabia. Is all this money, in, when all is said and done, going to make uh, a difference? Well, I think it can make a difference if it's spent properly. I mean, you know, part of the whole problem is when you, you know, ramp up programs and dump money on a place, can the place absorb it? How much of it will get stolen? Will it be used in the right way? Will it get diverted to a different kind of fight, for instance, that the president of Yemen is having against Shia rebels in the north rather than against Qaeda in um, in the east of Yemen. That's really the problem. The Saudi money partly buys allegiances, it keeps Saudi's hands going inside Yemen, it supports the conservative Islamic movement, but it also supports the president because the Saudis have understood since 9-11 that Yemen's security is integral to their own security. That if Yemen becomes a playground for Al-Qaeda, it's Saudi Arabia that's also at risk. Steve Erlinger of the New York Times, uh, thanks very much. We'll check back with you. Thanks a lot, Wolf.